Just because a piece of media doesn't hold up to modern scrutiny does not take away its importance to the landscape. There are countless games that are nothing short of integral, those that defined what a genre or indeed the entire medium could accomplish. However, going back to them today often leaves you feeling disappointed. I'm Sai for WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 best video games ever made until you played them again. Number 10, Fallout. The original Fallout is rough, certainly a masterful groundwork for a franchise, but looking back on it, it doesn't hold up well even just compared to its first sequel which ironed out pretty much everything Fallout 1 set up. Now it's not a bad game at all, which is why it's all the way down here at number 10, but the first Fallout has quite a few issues that keeps it from being as appreciated today as it was back then. For one, the UI is really messy in spots. Every Fallout player has made the mistake of accidentally giving their character the name of Nun because the way the UI is set up gives the player no reason to believe the nameplate can be written over. On top of that, the dice roll combat can take some getting used to compared to modern Fallout games, especially since it isn't as refined here as it will be in Fallout 2. Fallout is still a stone cold classic and one of the most influential and important PC games ever made, but going back to it 30 years later leaves a lot to be desired. Number 9, Assassin's Creed. Now that Assassin's Creed has become the bloated beast of a franchise that it is today, it's easy to forget the series' humble beginnings, especially since the original has since been so thoroughly overshadowed by its follow-ups. Originally, Assassin's Creed was no more than an experimental little Ubisoft title featuring the gimmick of visiting the past via genetic memories. And man, even back then there was a ton of room for improvement. Even going from 2 back to 1, the original Assassin's Creed moves as slow as molasses by comparison. The quality of life improvements to gameplay and progression that you take for granted in the following games are gone and in their place is capital J for jank. The original Assassin's Creed has enough charm that you can see the heights that it would eventually reach later on, but today this debut has very little to offer in itself. Number 8, Metroid. The original NES library was, and this cannot be overstated, the most important collection of games in the history of the medium to that point. Hell, there are so many games on this system that are so influential that we're still working off the notes taken from their success decades ago. But that doesn't mean they've all aged as well as, say, Super Mario Bros. The original Metroid is shockingly primitive compared to later entries, which is weird considering every Metroid game is fundamentally the same all the way back to the original. But the first Metroid, while having its own atmospheric charms, doesn't hold up when visited today. Stiff controls, samey corridor level design that's easy to get lost in, boring enemies and a map that's only outmatched in how useless it is by a later entry on this list. Metroid paved the way for a lot of things in the gaming industry which Super Metroid would then proceed to solidify, but especially with the GBA Remake Zero mission there's very little if any reason to go back to the original today. Number 7 Donkey Kong 64 Rare were the masters of the 3D platformer back in the day, armed with one of the most creative art and design teams on the market and a solid formula to build all their games from, Rare ensured the N64 was the go-to console for platforming. And the logical conclusion for this was Donkey Kong 64. While a critical and commercial success though, Donkey Kong 64 is not an entry many Rare fans go back to years later. This is likely because they have lives and Donkey Kong 64 is one of the biggest time sinks in gaming history. The title will waste all of your time on pointless busy work and padding and even aside from this it is precisely 5 hours longer than it needs to be. All five of the playable characters in Donkey Kong 64 have their own collectibles that only they can pick up, which means a lot of backtracking to get what you need to progress. Then there are the mini games, many of which are mandatory, which sucks because a lot of them are straight up awful. Veterans of the game, specifically the damned fools who attempt to speedrun it, will tell you the horror stories of Beaver Bother. All in all, there are much better rare games out there. Number six, Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot, one of the most beloved platformer mascots of all time, has a first entry that's uh, sloppy to say the least. The foundation is solid and the idea is superb but the execution of the original game is the epitome of the first being the worst. Now when the first title was remade for the Insane trilogy a few years back most of the issues were fixed which is why this isn't any higher but the original Crash Bandicoot on the PS1 just doesn't hold a candle to its two sequels. Platforming is simplistic at best and clumsy at worst. There's very little margin for error so trying to go for that 100% completion is an exercise in madness. If you are to play this game at all, your best bet is the Insane Trilogy version, which is closer in gameplay and style to Crash 3, arguably the perfected formula when it comes to the original trilogy. The first Crash is important to the landscape of the PS1 and gaming as a whole, but playing it today, it just doesn't hold up. 
Number 5, Tomb Raider. The original Tomb Raider series broke a lot of ground in the gaming landscape, with Lara Croft even being one of the biggest names in the industry for several years. However, it's a wonder any of that happened when you go back to the first Tomb Raider. The biggest issue by far with Tomb Raider 1 is the camera, which is easily one of the most infamous examples of early 3D camera dysfunction out there. Clumsy, shoddy and disobedient, you will die a lot in Tomb Raider, and every death will in some way be the camera's fault. Gunplay and platform are also nowhere near as refined as they would be in later titles. But what Tomb Raider did have was atmosphere. Every exotic locale that Lara visits oozes a sense of place and history that gives weight to her adventures. That, combined with Lara being one of the more interesting female gaming protagonists of the time, made people intrigued enough to want more. But the original game isn't really worth your time these days, especially when there are far better Tomb Raider games out there. Number 4, Grand Theft Auto 3. GTA 3 changed everything about the gaming industry industry. In the same vein as more modern games like Undertale, you just kind of had to be there to truly feel the impact of Grand Theft Auto 3. As it stands, you and I are still living in a world feeling the aftershocks of this game, the same way we're still feeling the aftershocks of Nirvana's Nevermind or even the first Star Wars. This makes the fact that the game sort of blows today all the more sad. In GTA 3, you can see and feel the DNA of every open world crime game to come in the following decades, but the game itself is just not there yet. Going from GTA GTA 5 or even 4 to this feels like taking about 500 steps back with a cardboard cutout silent protagonist, an open world that doesn't have a lot going on, and stiff combat. Yes, it's one of the most important games ever made, but it's a shame that the state it's in compared to later entries doesn't leave it open for revisiting. And double shame that the remake did it even dirtier. Number 3, The Legend of Zelda. The groundwork for video games, as they are today, is thanks in large part to the humble origins of The Legend of Zelda. From inventory to to open world design to even being able to save your damn game, all of these things have this NES classic to thank for getting the ball rolling. But going back to it today, as opposed to Link to the Past on the Super Nintendo or even Link's Awakening on the Game Boy, you'll find that the years have not been kind to this classic. For one thing, since it came out at a time when buying games without packaging wasn't something that was considered common enough to take into consideration, playing Legend of Zelda today will see you stuck with a tiny little grey box for a map. The more detailed and much more helpful map was a physical one that came in the box which the majority of players will not have 35 years later. On top of that, the exploration can be archaic at times, with vital item refills hiding behind walls that can only be cleared with your finite supply of bombs, which makes the fact that all the walls look exactly the same rather frustrating. Number 2, Mass Effect. The original Mass Effect is, like the rest of this list, a classic, no question about it, but the quality of life improvements made in its sequels have rendered this entry a hard one to go back to. While nowhere near as obtuse as other older Bioware titles, Mass Effect is missing a lot that fans have come to take for granted. Very sloppy implementation of the cover system is a big one. Cover systems are the sort where you can't really go halfway, you either have to commit to it or you don't have it at all. With how stiff it is to get in and out of cover in Mass Effect 1 as opposed to 2 and 3, they'd have been better off just not using it whatsoever. Also, no romancing the alien characters. It's Caden, Ashley or Liara. Given the characters of those that's basically like choosing between cardboard, getting punched in the face and okay, Liara's great, but the point still stands. The fact that it took the developers until the second game to realise that people want to smooch the cute purple helmet girl and the badass raptor sniper man says a lot about Mass Effect's team and not a lot of it is good. Or maybe it says something much worse about video game players. Uh, whatever, moving on. And number one, GoldenEye 007. No game on this list has done so much for the industry while aging so poorly as GoldenEye. It cannot be overstated enough how influential this silly little movie tie-in game was on FPS shooters. The multiplayer mode in particular is still held up as one of the best out there. It's just a shame then that the game itself kinda sucks. The shooting is so damn stiff that, as any veteran of that multiplayer will tell you, going against a character just an inch or two below default height makes it all almost impossible to hit them. The controls and NPC AI is somehow worse, with the escort mission partway through the campaign being particularly notorious. You will die so many times in this game, and like maybe three of those times will feel anything close to being fair. Outside of nostalgia, there is little to no reason to go back to GoldenEye 007 these days, but the impact it had when it was released back in the day is incalculable. And speaking of James Bond games, did you know there's a mission in the world is not enough that can be beaten in under 30 seconds? Why not 
check out this video on video game levels that can be beaten in seconds. Other than that, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave some comments below on other classic video games that have aged poorly. You can head over to whatculture.com for more content every day. Follow me on Twitter at Cyniac underscore one, two, three. I've been Cy for What Culture and have a good week.